This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. back to the Research Talks podcast here on Stockbox with Alan Green. How are you doing, Alan? I'm good, thanks, Mark. Yeah, we're just um, at the tail of, well, I, I say at the tail of the storm bed. I don't think we we are, actually, because when I first started talking to you about uh, 10 minutes ago, the sky was, uh, there were white clouds and your uh, patches of blue sky, and now I'm looking out and seeing some big grey clouds rolling. And so um, if you hear a clap of thunder, whatever, just to, you know, just, uh, just go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, just go with the flow. Okay, it's <laughs> probably the best best approach. Yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk today about Altona Rare Earths. Of course, a company mm-hmm. I like Altona Rare Earths very much. Um, I think they're very undervalued. There's not many. We've said this. I say it all the time when I talk to you about it. There's not many rare earth opportunities out there, and they've just released their scoping study, and they're going straight into the pfs have, i honestly think that's going to make people a lot of money if they invest now not investment advice but i think it's a, a very good buy uh right now at just about three million but um yeah you have to make your own decision on that but i do personally hold shares in, in that company i'm very very uh very bullish on on altona and of course the other company we're going to talk about is is Cavango resources who, um, of course, have shifted their focus quite heavily now away from the KSZ and into the KS- KCB and, indeed, Zimbabwe. So yep. Altona Rare Earths, Alan, of course, significant news this week with the scoping study and uh, looking, well, pretty good, isn't it? It is looking good, yes. And, and of course, we've spoken about Altona fairly regularly, Mark. Um, this company, of course, has taken a, a couple of years to evolve into uh, to, or to the point where it now has um, th- th- this Monte Miami rare earth projects uh, looking very exciting and full of potential. But um, if we just just wind the clock back a couple of years, of course, the company uh, started out. It was initially um, a, a historic. Uh, well, he, uh, historically, it was it was a company uh, engaged in coal, and um, the then uh, board, Christian Taylor Wilkinson, who was then CEO. Who is now still on the board? Um, uh, spun the company back out. It was an acquis listed company for many years, and its its uh, mandate was to seek out um, uh, uh, rare earth projects uh, uh, throughout the world that um, offered great value, uh, great upside potential, and um, uh, from that, the team uh, shortlisted a number of projects and undertook due diligence on those projects um they were, were looking at projects at that point in uganda uh, they were looking at projects in mozambique um and uh, and, and uh, a number of other uh, projects had been shortlisted by the group but um after um looking at uh, projects uh, in uganda and also in malawi as well um they settled on mozambique of course the portuguese colony um and uh, the Monte Moambi Rare Earths project uh, in the Tete province. Um, now, this the, it was already uh, uh, a, a, an operating uh, uh, brownfield site, effectively, because um, uh, there was a former floor spa mine uh, at uh, uh, on, on on the uh, on the land there. Uh, a number of previous drill holes, uh, which had intersected rare earths in four areas um so so uh the team knew that uh rare earths were actually at monte miami so after undergoing uh a, a fairly exacting process um uh the the company agreed um a series of of, of phases to um to 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 uh invest into monte, monte miami phase one resulted in 20 percent of the company uh, or 20 percent of the um of the asset Phase two, where the company are now, they have fifty-one percent of the asset. And as we move into, uh, as, as you said, Mark, into PFS stage, uh, they're now moving up to seventy percent. So uh, they're, they're holding uh, something that's really is a value and uh, and very much uh, 
undervalued in my opinion and of course yours too uh, which is which is quite right so um uh, significant in this development has been the former um uh, uh, the, the former chief ops officer Cedric Simone who has 25 years experience working in uh, in eastern Af- africa he's a, a non exec director and a geologist formerly uh, worked uh, from for Sadrum Fluspar which of course were the um, uh, operators of at Fluspar mine at Monte Miami and also on the Kenya Chamber of Mines. Um, the uh, uh, since that time, uh, the company has, of course, evolved. Um, there was a, a long drawn out process where the company made the transition from the Aquas Exchange onto the A market, where it now is, of course, with its uh, Epicode REE. Um, it came onto the A market. Uh, share price has been as high as. 5.7p as low as 3.6p and it's currently at just under 3.9p giving it as you say mark a, a valuation of about 3.2 3.3 million pounds um so a number of developments this year since the listing um the 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 uh, company has joined the and is now a member of the chamber of mines of mozambique um so uh so the 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 chamber basically uh, works with the government planning officers to um, to fast track and help get these projects uh, to market, help get them through, um, and of course uh, the, the the most significant uh, steps really were um, in uh, um, the the declaration back in the summer of the Maiden Jork resource estimate, um, uh, uh, which uh, which was also picked out by Resolve Research in August, um, and uh, the the company identified. Uh, uh, an initial uh, uh, an initial target of, of 57 million tons at 1.65% total rare earth oxides. Um, and of course, then the scoping study was published, the Maiden Jork resource uh, with 13.6 million tons at 2.42% total rare earth oxides. And that's come from 7,800 metres of drilling that's taking place on the Monte Moambi uh, license areas, but of course um, that's only part of the areas. You know, there's still there, there are still other areas the company will be looking at uh, across that uh, across the uh, the 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 uh, project license area. Um, uh, so on the back of the, uh, the this information, Resolve Research published an investor note uh, or, or an investment note back in August. Um, Highlighting that uh, these developments now pointed to uh, to uh, the uh, Monte Mambi asset as a potential tier one asset, and it also saw opportunities for future syn- synergies with other projects uh, in Malawi and southern Tanzania. So it may well be that um, now the company has the project uh, at this point, um, and of course it now owns fifty one percent of the project. Um, it may be in a much in a much stronger position to go back and perhaps look at some of the projects it looked at previously, where perhaps it uh, it couldn't strike the deal that perhaps it wanted to, and 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 of course strike that deal. But what what this means for the Monte Moambi asset as it stands, um, peer group analysis, uh, this is from Resolve Research, suggested that there could be at least five hundred percent upside potential from where. The company is currently valued, um, and of course, this is compared to other companies uh, um, uh, that are mining for rare, for rare earth assets. Um, so that implies, or re- uh, um, the the uh, Resolve Research uh, said that the the upside potential implies a potential target price of thirty point nine pence, and of course, that's against uh, three point eight eight pence now. So that's mm-hmm. uh, that's a multi bagger. In every sense of the word, so um, uh, the, the another key um, aspect of the uh, the find at um, at the, uh, uh, the Monte Mambi uh, Rare Earth Project is uh, the, the the scoping study that was of course announced um, a, 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 um, a day or so ago. Mark uh, the 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 scoping study has now highlighted a post tax net present value at the project of two hundred eighty three point three million dollars. Um, a post-tax internal rate of return of 25% and project payback in two and a half years. So, so that's that, that's a very commercial opportunity right there. Um, 
And uh, the, the, there's an opportunity to produce uh, 15,000 t- uh, tonnes per annum of mixed rare earth carbonate, um, th- with an, uh, and that will sell on for an average price of 13, $13,558 uh, per tonne. Um, so that's uh, that in itself is a, a hugely uh, commercial, um, uh, 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 hugely commercial numbers right there. The, the the life of mine there is eighteen years. Um, they expect to extract seven hundred and fifty thousand tons of ore per annum extracted and processed, um, giving the uh, giving Monte Mayambi, uh the finished mine a life of mine EBITDA of one point six seven billion dollars. So you know that's a, those are substantial numbers. An initial capex will be required of two hundred seventy six million dollars. Um, uh, but but of course. Uh, what what uh, the company also uh, identified in its maiden jaw um, estimate was that the uh, the total rare earth oxides included 0.31 percent neodymium and praseodymium. Pre- 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 praseodymium. <laughs> that was what I was trying to say. Um, 0.31 percent. So that implies that's an implied 42 and a half thousand tons there. Um, uh, these two metals, the most sought after magnet metals for uh, electric vehicle EV power drive, power drive trains, and of course wind turbines too. Um, and it's estimated that um, by 2040 there will be a supply deficit for these two metals of some 90,000 tons. So there's huge demand for these metals. They're hugely important as we evolve in, in into this uh, in, in, into this green green world that uh, that we'll be living in in a few years. So EVs and of course uh, wind turbines will be uh, looking for sources of uh, of these two metals. So um, to finalise on the scoping study again, um, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the numbers have been established. The project is now entering uh, phase three, and of course that entails the pre uh, the pre feasibility study stage. Um, and once that PFS is established, that will be the uh, the exact numbers, the, the the structure of the system, how it will work, um, and uh, how the how the how the uh, the metals will be and the total rare earth oxides will be mined, how they'll be processed, the cost of of that processing, and then of course the the getting of those uh, those metals to market. So uh, a, a hugely exciting phase for Altonia now, and I think just to go back to what you said at the start, Mark, I think. Uh, this company has done the hard yards. Everything is now in place. Um, the scoping study has drawn a line in the sand, put a value there, loud and clear. Um, and of course, we are in this market at the moment where mining and resource companies are hugely undervalued. But if you're looking forward, which, which mm-hmm. metals, which are the, which metals are the most important, which are going to be the metals to to drive the new economy? It's it's uh, it is these rare earths that that they are crucial to. Um, crucial to uh metal supply going forward and of course there is a a, a supply deficit uh, based on current numbers i would say that's very likely to increase so it makes projects like this all the more important and altona now seem to be in pole position so um i know you spoke to cedric 7a recently uh, mark and of course he's uh, very enthused by the opportunities going forward but uh, certainly you know i i think the resolve research uh, price target at 30p at this at this moment might seem rather fanciful but um if the company completes these stages uh, it'll then own 70 percent of the project this makes Altona a hugely valuable company um even if the share price rose from here to say 10p or mm. 15p you'd have a hugely valuable company what was the target you said on the note was it 39 or no 30.9 pence so, so oh, 30.9 30.9 yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so round it off and say thirty p, but that's yeah, the, the, that, that's based on the numbers. The and and the the uh, resolve research undertook peer group analysis. So if you look at the announcements made by uh, made by Alterna, you can actually go back and read that note in detail. So it makes good reading. You know, there's a there's a lot of detail in there, and uh, and you know the potential is is there for all to see. Oh, indeed. I mean, so that already is what a sort of. I mean, I was going to say at the start. I reckon there's a ten bagger in Altona. You know, three million ish to thirty million. But there you go. I mean, 
yeah, just under a 10 bagger, you're taking on that 30p target there because it's 3.6 at the moment. So, yeah, uh, potential upside is huge. Cedric, um, I don't know how the market will recognise this uh, opportunity here, but Cedric did say to me that he was checking other peers, i.e. Rainbow, Rare Earth, Macango, and they're just not reacting. I think it's like the rest of the mining stocks, like you say. Yeah. They're just not reacting to to the good news because, well, for whatever reason, macroeconomic reasons, um, you know, interest rates higher in banks, money coming out of the markets, cost of living, all, you know, you can talk forever about the reasons why. But, um, yeah, I think there's a good, if you were to dollar cost average into something like Altona from now, yeah, I think you could be sitting very pretty. But what yeah, do I, I know? <laughs> well, this is it, Mark. I, I, I think I think the frustration for all of us is that uh, that that we're looking at these uh, these companies, and, and we've seen many companies evolve through these stages where 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 they identify an asset, they drill, confirm it's there. Then, of course, there are the scoping studies, then the the, the field work to establish the size of the asset, the drilling start, and then, of course, you've got the the scoping studies and uh, and everything else to go with it. Then PFS and 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 of course, you move forward from there. Um, and it, it's it's a long drawn out process. And of course, the company's got to be funded for its operations through that time. Um, and, you know, uh, years ago, a few years ago, uh, the companies could raise the money easily at a premium and go out and do it because the 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 demand was there. But, but of course, we we're, were in a low interest rate environment and a low uh, inflation environment. That's now changed. The macro picture, picture has changed. Um, and there's a bit of a risk off approach in mining at the moment and um that won't last forever you know that will change and i think when it changes it will change in a hurry it'll snap back violently mm. and i think we will see you know companies like altona the share price could you know literally rise by 50 percent in a few days or you know for no other reason than the, mm -hmm. the the underlying fundamentals uh have changed and you know perhaps investors are coming back into the market because They've got more disposable income, and they they see real opportunity. Uh, uh, the, the the one thing I have seen mm. is attending the various mining events that I attend. They're always busy. They're always well attended. There's a lot of optimism there. So there are high net worths out there that are seeing huge opportunities in these undervalued companies, and uh, positioning now um, it mm. could yeah it, it, it could be frustrating for a year, or nothing might happen for a year. Or you could wait two months, and all of a sudden the macro picture changes, and away we go. And that's that's the opportunity we're faced with. But I think we've been bumping along the bottom for so long now. It's um, uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, one would hope that um, that uh, most of the the downside has been done, as they say. Yeah, well, one would hope so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, all you can do is uh, accumulate in the good opportunities and and hold them really. Yeah. Um, because it's it's going to come, and you and you're right. It will. We've seen it before. You know, going back years ago to Metal Tiger, for example. One day that was literally up, or oh, at eighty plus percent in a day, mm. for, and there was no news even on that day. It just it just so happened that the market just clicked on to yeah. existing news. Same thing with the GDP. You know how that went. You get yeah, good news come out, really good news come out, nothing happened, but then it took a couple of months, and then suddenly, whoa. So, yeah, anyway, I'm sure we'll see that with Altona at some point. But um, Kavango Resources, then, uh, Alan, that's the company we want to cover today. Well, again, a, a company very much um, in uh, very much in, in, in an evolving phase or, or a phase of, e phase of evolution. Um, of course, the, uh, the company management changed uh, a few years ago. We now have uh, Ben Turney, who's the mm -hmm. uh, chief executive. Uh, David Smith, non-executive chairman, um, and you know ben, ben is very experienced in the small cap market. Understands the dynamics that, that drive that drive small caps. Um, Brett Grist, of course, chief officer and company secretary. Um, he spent more than twenty years in mineral exploration work in Africa and the Middle East, um, and uh, has has worked for companies including Reunion Mining and Casa Mining. Um, and then we have, of course, the the founder of Cavango, who's Hilary Gumbo, who's um, uh, 35 years experience in mineral exploration in South Africa, worked for a reunion mining, canister resources, rock, um, uh, rock over, and and is involved uh, on many other levels. And then yeah. uh, somebody that we've, we've both spoken to as well um, previously, Jeremy Brett, the executive director, senior geophysical 
consultant who has a great deal of experience in the KSZ, which is one of Kavango's uh, primary assets. Um, so, so a huge experience team uh, operating the company. So, in terms of um, share price performance, again, you know, it's a similar it's a similar story uh, with Kavango. Uh, the company currently trades at 0.63p, has a valuation of 5.2 million, and that's uh, that's down on the year. Of course, the share price has traded um, as high as as 2.1p, so it's just off year lows as it is currently. Um, but uh, the structure of the company, the three operating subsidiaries: Kavango Minerals Limited in Botswana. Um, that company owns and operates uh, sixteen uh, pros- uh, sixteen uh, prospecting licenses in the KSZ that I mentioned just now, and the KSZ is the Kalahari Suta Zone. And initially, the the prime management team uh, modelled this uh, this asset. Um, and also Jeremy Jeremy Brett, the uh, non-exec director on the board, has a great deal of experience in this region. Has a very good understanding of of the of the KSZ, and um, it was modelled modelled. Um, and the geological anomalies that were established there um, established this huge uh, 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 three-dimensional anomaly uh, that was very similar in structure uh, to the Norilsk mine in Siberia. And of course, that's not currently producing due to uh, the, the ban on Russian products, but um, but it's uh, potential to produce, uh, you know, huge amounts of nickel um, and uh, copper, cobalt, uh, and so on. Um, so, th- so the uh, the KSZ was modelled, um, but again, when you start to drill something like this, and we've seen this with so many companies, uh, the old drilling adage, a miss is as good as a mile, because literally your drill could go down 100 meters and you could be two centimeters away from a mineral uh, uh, a, a big mineral find um and of course you'd never know about it because your core would come up um, empty but um th- there are always indications there and of course the company has undertaken uh um uh, uh many many uh surveys uh air airborne magnetic surveys um electromagnetic surveys um the uh, CSAMT surveys that's the Control source audio frequency magnetoteric survey. Um, uh, so, so they had a very good understanding of the model there. Um, but really, July this year kind of drew a line, certainly under the activities at the KSZ. To date, they drilled whole uh, in, in toward the B1 conductor target uh, uh, in the KSZ. That's whole KSZ DD003 to 606 meters, and didn't discover any significant copper or nickel. So because of the cost of drilling, understandably, and because of limited funds, the company announced at that point it was ceasing uh, its activities. Now, of course, you know, sod's law. Um, they could have drilled left or right by, you know, a couple of metres and they might have hit pay dirt. But, of course, that's mm-hmm. for another day. So so that's the case. So that's Kavango Minerals. Um, they also have two licences uh, through uh, another subsidiary of Kavango Minerals, uh, Shongwe Resources. There are two licenses in the KCB. That's the Kalahari Copper Belt, uh, and this is a this is a very famous copper belt that's home to uh, to many uh, many famous um, uh, discoveries, including, of course, the sand fire resources. Uh, we spoke about that and uh, the um, the impact on, on metal tiger um, uh, some years ago. Sand fire resources have the Mateo Copper Mine there. Rio Tinto have their operations. Um, this is on the border with Namibia, of course. Um, so w- with the KSZ, uh, the, the company uh, has another operating company, Kenya Resources Limited um, in Botswana. And this company, of course, owns uh, 16 prospecting licenses in the KCB, the Kalahari Copper Belt. Um, and, and of course, I'll, I'll go into more detail on those shortly. Um, and of course, the Ditao Farms project, um, where there are four prospecting licenses, and this is prospective for both gold and rare earths. Now, this, of course, was initially owned uh, 50-50 with Power Metal Resources. Uh, Power Metal Resources um, then uh, uh, um, sold the its half to Kanye Resources or back to Kavango. Um, so Kavango now owns Kanye Resources. Uh, Power Metal Resources still has an 8.2% stake in the company, uh, down from 9.8%. Um, 
and 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 uh, the I think it's significant to uh, to note that with the Kenya Resources asset, um, an independent uh, uh, company uh, um, assessed the the value of Kenya at the time and said the company had a standalone valuation at that point of some eight million dollars. So of course that is not in any way reflected in the valuation of Kavango as a whole. Um, so we then come to Kavango Zimbabwe, which is the third uh, the third part of the tripod, if you like, and this is the most recent uh, uh, addition to the group. And the Kavango Zimbabwe owns the Nara project in Zimbabwe, and also the or, or owns options to the Nara project in Zimbabwe and options into the hillside and leopard projects, which I'll cover in more detail shortly. But of course, uh, to bring us up to date on the most recent developments, in June, the company secured a major backer. They agreed uh, initially uh, with a company called Pure Bond. This go back, goes back to May this year. Um, Pure Bond, uh, which is a subsidiary of Solai, um, they agreed a potential £6 million investment to take place in two tranches. June the 14th, they announced that they completed £1.4 million, uh, the, or the first part of that tranche, raised £1.4 million from Pure Bond at 1p. They'd issued 140 million shares. Um, on the back of that, Pure Bond now owns 26.6% of Kavango. So think of that. You know, back in June, that money was raised at 1.4 million uh, at a valuation of 1 point, uh, of 1p. Um, the valuation is now 0.63p. So um, if, an, if, if nothing else, it just shows the parlor state of the markets at present because it's not even valuing really where uh, where the uh, a major high net worth investor or uh, inst group of institutional investors valued the company at so that's that that i think is 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 pivotal to understanding what kavango is now they, of course they have the option to draw down on the remaining funds but um i would expect them to do that a when they need to which won't be for a while um and b that raise will probably take place at a much higher price because i would expect them to move the projects on that they're engaged with so um i mentioned the ksz of course that's um that's uh, uh th that's put on hold for now um in the kcb they've identified a number of uh of high potential prospects the karakubis license um is highly prospective it sits on regional trends that have yielded these major discoveries of course sand uh, closely sand sand fire resources material copper mine um the airborne uh, electromagnetic and uh, CSAMT surveys they've undertaken have been encouraging already for the company. Um, and most recently in September, the company announced it had acquired six new prospecting licenses at the KCB adjacent to Karakubis and also the South, also the South Gansey block in the KCB. And what, what that's done, it's basically joined the, the land up together. If you look at that announcement in September for, from Kavango, you can actually see there's a map in the in the announcement which shows you how the licenses now come together. So they have this huge area to go on. They're also working with uh, an expert and veteran of the Kalahari Copper Belt, a gentleman called David Catterall has been involved with the companies that have made most of the major discoveries there. And they're working closely with David in developing the Karakubis block. So that's a hugely exciting opportunity, uh, uh, I believe, for the group going forward. And of course, copper is, is a key metal for the future. You know, we've we discussed um, battery metals with Altona um, a little earlier. Um, copper is going to be key for uh, for the battery metals industry and the, the green technology industry. And of course, it's it's really got wider applications in many ways because uh, as well as being uh, providing the backbone for so many of the new uh, new energy um, uh, components, it's also a key part uh, in uh, conventional uh, uh, connectivity and of course you know pipes for plumbing and all the rest of it. The uh, the the list goes on. So um, the 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 most recent step that Kavango has taken as a company really is is in Zimbabwe. Um, the company and made two announcements in June and July. In June, it announced it had secured a two-year option to acquire the Nara Gold Project, um, and this is forty-five contiguous claims. Um, 
but also it, it, it includes um, a number of historical gold workings. So the initial uh, the, the initial work in the area will involve exploration. Um, and what this will do, it will assess uh, what's there. But uh, the, the primary objective is to assess the tailings uh, that taken from these historical gold workings, because the great thing about tailings is, is they invariably uh, will contain um, amounts of gold or amounts of uh, of uh, the, the metal or the commodity that, that was being mined. And there are very easy ways to process tailings and also generate near term revenue. And we've seen that with so many companies um, uh, in the past. It's a very quick route to revenue. So so that's a, that's a very strong move from the company there. Um, it also announced a six months not month option to acquire the hillside and leopard projects um and the leopard project uh, in, uh is uh, it includes 44 contiguous claims again historical workings uh, these workings produced over 22000 tons of ore at three and a half grams per ton and also the second site at leopard produced over 1 million tons of uh, 1 million ounces of gold previously so Again, they're, they're working in territory that's been worked previously, but uh, as with any old um, older workings, you take modern mining techniques, modern data gathering uh, uh, tools into the area, and you can often discover that uh, only part of the asset was was mined. Um, important to note as well that um, uh, the second one, uh, that's Hillside, uh, the where they have the six-month option, is based on the same greenstone built as the nara gold project which is some 20 kilometers away so uh, again um the the uh the acquisitions have been made or the or, or the options uh, have been signed and made and uh, of course the the company will be announcing next steps in due course but um i think there's an awful lot of news to come from Kavanga. we're going to hear from ben and the team and i know you know uh ben and the team on social media have been uh champion the bit because as with all logistical exercises like this, getting the kit, getting the team on the ground is always, uh, it, it takes longer than you think. Um, but I think we're very close to uh, some, 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 a series of announcements from Kavango that will really start the ball rolling. But I go back to the point I made. I think what you've got to look at as an investor, you're looking for undervalued companies. You want to get into the space uh, and, and, uh, and seek opportunity at good value. Well, Cavango raised 1.4 million quid in June at 1p. The share price is now 0.6p. They also have another 4.5 million quid to draw down on from the same source. So um, I think uh, if you're looking for a risk-off opportunity, uh, I think Cavango right now probably is one of the best bets out there in the small cap uh, sector. So take a look. Great. Thank you, Alan. Yes, I do um, do keep a close eye on on Kavango there, and of course, it's a bit of a shame what happened in the the, the KSZ, but it is exploration, as Ben put, put it very bluntly. You know, it is exploration, yeah. and it's the risk yeah. you take on. Um, yeah, as an investor or indeed as a, as a company operating in in this sector, um, the the the, admir- the admirable thing, which I have not actually seen very much at all in the sector is um, okay well it's a miss we're going to sort of move on and focus somewhere else you know yeah, often yeah. companies try and kind of oh it's not quite there it's inconclusive and you kind of don't really get an answer whereas at mm. least here there's a definitive answer and yeah let's focus on uh, on the KCB or of course there's more lots of other projects around and, and, and Zimbabwe so um, yeah all credit to Ben for um, for doing that and let's see what he can deliver. Well, I think also the fact is that uh, in the midst of uh, the KC, uh, the, the KSZ um, uh, campaign, they raised this money. They got this investor behind mm. them, and that mm. you know that's a that's a, you know that, that that's a big feather in Ben's cap, uh, really, because because a lot of companies you know have to face those results without that sort of backing. So so that's a that in itself is 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 hugely important in my book, and I think um, yeah they've got these assets now in Zimbabwe. But they have the the KCB, you know, um, and they have they have ground that's very close and, and geological anomalies very close to you know working copper mines and um, you know Rio Tinto and Sandvara resources mm-hmm. operating in the area. So so you know I think there's uh, it, 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 as I say fr- from a risk off standpoint, I think Avango looks really good right now. Indeed. Well, thank you very much, Alan. So I wish you 
well, as pleasant weekend as you can have. Hope the uh, weather clears up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give um, my umbrellas a hand. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll speak again um, next next week. Indeed. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, sir, Mark. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.